Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we are actually going to be setting up the dashboard for our Plex NAS system. And if you guys missed that video of the build or even the setup, I'll leave a link right on the top left or down in the description below. So let's get started. So I do want to thank Micro Center for sponsoring this build and I'll leave all the links down in the description below for all the parts that I use for this build. How this works is we're going to be using Grafana, which is a web-based dashboard that allows you to easily configure how everything looks to what data you want to display. And you could use any web browser to basically open Grafana. Now Grafana pulls their data from a data source like InfluxDB. Now how it gets populated is that you have either PlexPy or CollectD to send the information to InfluxDB and then Grafana will pull that information. So we're going to be setting all that up today. Ultimately at the end I want to be able to display everything onto a monitor right over here and uh, have a Raspberry Pi Zero display that information. So to get started we're going to have to SSH over to our machine and start installing all this application. Now I did write up a little write up over here for myself just for my own reference because I'm not going to remember everything. I have my terminal open and also a little dashboard that I'm going to be using. Well, basically. So to get started, I'm going to SSH root over to my NAS. And from here, we can start installing our applications. Now, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you guys. How's that? That seems to be a little bit better. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually download some of the repositories we need so we could grab Grafana. Now, Grafana has their own website where actually I grab this information from, how to get the key and all that stuff. And I'll leave a link down in the description for everything. So I do have that installed, which is good. I'm going to w get this stuff, grab the key, okay, uh, I'm going to add this to my repository, I'm going to add this to my repository, um, and I will have a write-up for this. Actually, I'll put this on a pastebin, this l same thing, I'll just put on a pastebin down below so you can follow along, and I'll also do a write-up. I know I'm a little bit behind on my write-ups, but I I'm working on it. Now sudo app update. Now I should be able to grab Grafana. So sudo app install Grafana. There you go. Now I should be able to just enable it. sudo app system ctl status Grafana. Oh, I have to start it first. It's grafana-server.service. See, tab always helps with autocomplete. Now I can check status of Grafana. And it is active and it is running. Awesome. Now I'm going to enable it so this way it will start up with the system. All right. Now, next thing is to install our database, which we're going to be using InfluxDB. So I'm going to grab that, paste that here. And we're also going to start up this database. sudo systemctl start influx. Oh, there you go. Status. And it is running. Awesome. Okay, now that we got the two working, the next thing we need to do is install collectd. So sudo app install collectd. Now collectd will actually collect the system information like hard drive space, um, CPU usage, all that stuff. And that's going to be able to send the information over to our influx so Grafana could pull it. Okay. And now that we got all that set up, we're going to have to start configuring the files. Now, if we don't configure anything right now, we could actually just hop right over to our server 3000 port 3000 and you should have a dashboard already with grafana but there's not going to be anything displayed because we just don't have anything going to it yet so that's what we're going to be working on right now so the next step is to modify etc whoops influx db 
influx.configure. Now here we have to actually enable a few things. First, we have to enable HTTP right here, which will allow us to pull data from influx. So we're gonna have to open this up. It'll allow for any address at port 8086 and HTTP enable is true. Now, since we're also gonna be collecting from collectd, we need to shift all the way down to here and go to collectd and enable this to true. And bind address, we're gonna change that to 8096. It doesn't matter. As long as it stays the same, you could keep the address like it was 20,000 something before. Database is gonna be collectd. And over here, database type, this is what you have to change. So it's gonna be user share collect D slash type. Let me move this over a little bit. Types.db. All right, save this. All right, and then now we're gonna to have to modify the collect D. So sudo nano slash etc collect D collect D dot config. And here we have to enable baster, baster plugin dir and database. But here you see how this is, has an extra line. We don't need that. We just need user share collecty types.db. And we have to enable network. So move down you see how there's a lot of plugins. You could actually pull whatever plugin you want. CPU frequency, um, DNS information. I will like look into that later in the future, but I'm just gonna get this uh, basic setup working first. Now we do have to load the plugin network and then we have to configure it by moving all the way down and looking for network here. Am I getting close? And let's use a control W network let's do that there you go and in network over here we have to enable this whoops wrong line server and we just need to change this to 8096 which is the same as what we have in the influx db and it's going to be localhost 127.0.0.1 move down a little bit and we are going to enable the plugin and that is it now we just need to restart the services and it should start collecting all the information so sudo system ctl restart collect d and influx db we have to restart too oh, because we changed the properties over so there you go now we should start seeing some information in our um, collect D because it's now transferring everything over. Now, if you want to double check if everything's working, we could just go to status and it's active and it's running. And same thing goes for collect D. All we have to do is hit status and that should be running. Awesome. Now the next step, uh, collect information from our Plex. So there's a code online that allows you to do this right over here. I'm going to grab this. And this is actually the dashboard. The source code is actually called Plex Pi, but this will actually collect everything for you. So I'm gonna shoot over to the op directory and I'm gonna do git clone and download Plex data collector. Now that name's a little bit too long, so I'm just gonna rename that to Plex collector. This way, when we write a script for it, it'll be a little bit easier. Now in here, you have to modify the config.ini. So our influxdb, we don't have to change. The database name, Plex data, we could leave. And if there's any authentication, right now we don't have any authentication for our, our database, so we're fine. This is what you need to add, which is the username and password of your Plex account and the server that you have it in. So mine is 192.168.105.106. That's my server for my Plex. And that's about it. I just have to add this bit of information and we should be all set. So now that we configured that INI, we have to grab the requirements, which is the Plex Pi and all that other stuff. So we're gonna do pip3 install dash r 
requirements.txt. This will install all the requirements that I need, and I already have it because I've tested this once, that we need to run this script. So since I'm done with this, all I have to do is Python 3, well, for me, it's Python 3 already. So Python and pi collector. Oh, I forgot to put the address for my influxdb, 127.0.0.1. All right, there we have it. It doesn't exist, so it's attempting to create everything that we need. And since we created uh, the Plex, it's called Plex.data, dash data, we're gonna have to remember that. Okay, now that everything's all set up, we can start building our dashboard. So here, our username is admin, and I think it's password. No, it's admin admin. And it's gonna ask you to change your password. So I'm gonna just do something simple for now, and I'll change it later. And now we have our configuration, our, our dashboard that we got to configure. So we got to add data sources. And because we are using influx, we're going to be able to add this. It's going to be HTTP local host 8086. And the database name for this is plex data. And there's no user or password. And save and test. So since there's no Plex data found, I believe it's capital. It's case sensitive. Yes, it is. All right. Now that it's working, we can head back and we got our first database called InfluxDB. We could actually rename that to anything, but that's fine. Our next one we have to do is HTTP local host 8086. And this one is going to call collect D because we made another one called collect D. And there you go, data source is working, and we go ahead back. So now we got two. Um, just so I don't confuse myself, collect D. There you go. I'm just going to rename that. Perfect. So one is called collect D, and the other one is called influx DB. That's fine. So I'm not a professional at making dashboards at all, but I do know where to get them. And here we have a perfect example, which I, again, I'll leave all the links. You go to example and there's a JSON file. So I'm gonna be able to hit raw, copy all this, head over to the dashboard area, all right? And over to manage, I'm gonna import a dashboard, paste this that I just copied, load, head over to influxdb to select because that's my Plex data, import, and all of a sudden you see this? I have zero Plex streams going on, TV shows, episodes, everything is working for my dashboard already. Now, this is not enough information because I want to be able to pull my CPU usage, storage, and all that other stuff. So I'm going to save this dashboard. Whoops, wrong button. I'm going to save this dashboard and call this um, Plex. And I'm going to manage and pull another dashboard in here. Again, because I'm not that good at making these dashboards. Now from... This is the other dashboard I'm going to pull. So I'm going to download the JSON. Okay, I could open with code or save it if I want. Copy all this. Head over to my Plex data. Paste this. Load it again. Now this will be pulling from my Collect D import. And there we have it. All my information for, you know, disk space, um, CPU usage, load average. It doesn't look like much right now because I haven't collected that much data. But once 24 hour passes, you're gonna see a lot of data flow into here. Now, how do I merge the two? So what I've ended up doing is, say like if I wanted to use load average, I'm gonna go over here, more, copy this, and I'm gonna save this dashboard just so I don't lose it. So I'm just gonna call this host info. And I'm gonna head over to my other dashboard, right over here called Plex data example. Yeah, which I should name that. I'm gonna be able to add a new panel, move this to wherever I want, and paste the panel. Now this will start collecting the data from what I was looking at before. Now I do have to like move this around and edit this data because it's pulling from collect D, and I do have to remove this tag, and you see how it's like pulling now because it's a different host. Yeah, anyway, that's how you would get that to work. Now if I want to remove this too, it's gonna pull that information, then remove this data, 
and there you go now i'm having i have my load average and so forth and so forth i just need to go back and forth with the dashboards and finish configuring this so now that we have all this set up it's time to put it on my wall so let's start doing that There we have it guys. This is our dashboard with all the information that I want to display. Uh, right now I still have to work on the sizing because I didn't know, well, I didn't know, but if you rotated the screen, you get the less width. So I'm gonna have to play around with that. But yeah, uh, ultimately that's that's it. I kind of want to keep this here and I forgot how painfully the Raspberry Pi Zero is so slow. I might have to switch that over to like a Raspberry Pi 3 just so I could load this dashboard a little bit. But yeah, if I wanted to switch this over to like a full screen setting, um which i just did that's how it would ultimately look you could actually change uh the way how it displays and if i was to start streaming something you would start seeing a list of people streaming and everything over here now i have so much more real estate that i could put more information here as far as like hard drive space um my other nas the raspberry pi uh, nas that i just built and a couple of other stuff that I could display over here, like my Plex server and stuff. But yeah, uh, now I could be like one of the cool kids on YouTube where people have like a screen behind them and start displaying stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. As I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.